Welcome. This is what is happening on the sun today, the 20th of August, 2011. 44 years ago this day, Voyager 2 was launched. Both Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 have now exited the solar system. On the way to the heliopause, Voyager 1 visited the planets Jupiter and Saturn. So our trivia question for today is which planets did Voyager 2 visit on the way to the heliopause? The answer will be given at the end. For most of the last 24 hours, the sun has been basically brain dead. Here in the GOES X-ray plot, you can see that we've had no sea flares. However, in the last six to eight hours, we've started to have some minor activity. So let's go to our active regions and see if we can pinpoint where it came from. We now only have two numbered regions on the disk. 1273 disappeared overnight. The small unnumbered region ahead of 1271 disappeared. But we do have a new region coming over the northeast limb. So let's take a look at the regions individually and see what they look like. This is what region 1271 looked like yesterday. And this is what it looks like today. The region to the northeast seems to have weakened significantly. Otherwise the region doesn't look all that different. Maybe some of the small um, satellite spots have weakened. But generally the region has not changed much. Which is why it's not producing very much activity. Now let's take a look at region 1272. Here again is what it looked like yesterday. And here's what it looks like today. Now the leading spot seems to have weakened significantly. However, we have some of the trailing spots back again. So we're seeing growth in some areas and decay in others. Very confusing. Now let's take a look at the new region coming over the northeast limb. It's very foreshortened so it's difficult to see the details but there looks to be two modest sized spots there. Now this is the return of region 1260 but it will be given a new number when Noah gets around to assigning it one. If you go back to my August 1st video you'll see what this region looked like when we had last had a really good look at it. So overall we have a picture of regions decaying and disappearing with the odd promising bits of growth. So we'll have to take a look at the X-ray movie later and see whether the main activity is in region 1272 or in this new region coming over the northeast limb. Now let's take a look at the evolution of these regions over the last 48 hours using the HMI data from the Solar Dynamics Observatory. In both the optical and magnetic movies I'd like you to try to get the impression of whether there's general growth or general decay and if so where when you're looking at these regions. You may want to put the movie into full screen mode to see the details, particularly of the magnetic movie. So based on that data, would you put your bets on region 1272 or the new region on the northeast limb? Mademoiselle et monsieur, fait for jour. In case you hadn't guessed already, I'm as good with foreign languages as I am with singing. Now let's turn our attention to the transition region and corona, using the data from the AIA instrument on the Solar Dynamics Observatory. In the Helium 304 channel, we do not see very much evidence for prominence or filament eruptions which might lead to coronal mass ejections. In both the transition region and coronal movies we see that region 1272 has produced a lot of variable activity over the last 24 hours. But so has the region coming over the northeast limb. So this increased activity is probably a combination of the two. How many of you got that right? In the high temperature image from the GOES soft x-ray imager we can see that that uh, coronal hole is now moving into the western hemisphere of the sun and should start to affect the uh, solar wind that the earth sees in the next day or two. As I mentioned earlier we've had no coronal mass ejections in the last 24 hours but you can note in the C3 field of view that Mercury is moving out of the field of view to the west and brightening slightly. This is caused by the graded filters that chronographs use to cover the huge dynamic range and intensity of coronal mass ejections as they move out from the sun. The solar wind, as measured by the A spacecraft, shows that the temperature and the density of the solar wind has changed very little over the last 24 hours. However, the velocity of the solar wind has increased slightly in that time frame, but not enough to be accounted for by the coronal hole, which probably won't start affecting us until tomorrow. The auroral zone remains relatively quiet, and the KP index has been varying between 0 and 1 for the last 24 hours, with an average of less than 0.5. So in summary then, the X-ray background has risen to the B2 level. The sunspot numbers remain constant at about 46. Radio sun intensity is at 98 solar flux units. Solar wind speed has increased slightly to 380 km per second, but with a density of less than 1 proton per cubic centimeter. And geospace conditions are very quiet. So my forecast for the next 24 hours is that C flares are possible, but M and X flares are highly improbable. The sunspot numbers should remain stable. Coronal mass ejections are possible. The solar wind speed should go higher, and the, but the chances of getting a geomagnetic storm are very poor. We can use the composite coronal image to look in the slightly longer term forecast, 
and see that behind the limb there is a complex of regions due over in the next couple of days. This is the remnants of region 1261 which produced so much activity last time around. And the bright region further east is region 1263, so in a week's time we may have that one back which should be a lot of fun. The answer to the trivial question is that Voyager 2 visited all four gas giants, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune. So that's it for today, keep safe, bye for now.